Legend Paul McCartney has been able to enjoy a variety of stunning properties over the decades. Whether it's a Manhattan townhouse, a ranch in Arizona, or one of his many luxury abodes in his native UK, Paul is living in style. In fact, it's said that this beetle owns over $100 million worth of property across the world. And today, we're taking a look. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Do I even have to introduce you guys? to Paul McCartney, like really? He's only arguably the most successful British musician of all time, with a net worth estimated to be in the 10 figure range. Yes, that means billions. I say to people that out of I think it's about 300 songs that John and I wrote together, we always finished a song, which is pretty remarkable. As one fourth of the most famous band of all time, the Beatles, Paul would earn his legendary status throughout his heyday of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. He's continued to produce new music up until this very day, and when he tours, which is frequently, he can still pull in anywhere between 50 to 70 million dollars a year. Of course, he also earns tens of millions of dollars every year from both royalties and licensing fees from his music. Further, it's via his own publishing company, MPL Communications, which also owns the rights to music by artists like Buddy Holly and Carl Perkins. So what does Paul like to invest all of this in? Real estate, of course. Paul is said to own over $100 million worth of property all around the globe including a New York City townhouse, a beach house in East Hampton, and over half a dozen homes strewn throughout the United Kingdom. But today, we'll focus on four of Paul's most personal properties, such as his home located in Beverly Hills, which he first picked up in 2001, and his Manhattan penthouse that he purchased in 2015 for a whopping $15.5 million. And then there are the two homes that Paul feels the strongest emotional connection to. His 190-acre ranch located in Tucson, Arizona, where Paul lived out the happiest years of his life alongside his late wife, Linda. And finally, his primary residence, a 1,500-acre property located in East Sussex, England that he's owned from the early 70s onward. Hey guys, it's Kara, back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment. And today, we're checking out the homes of Sir Paul McCartney. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. Let's kick things off with Paul's West Coast home. Located in the gorgeous Hollywood Hills, Paul first bought this property back in 2001 from, of all people, Courtney Love. Courtney had been living in the home since buying it from Ellen DeGeneres in 1997, but Paul, tired of staying in hotels every time he toured California, finally decided to put down some roots in the Golden State when he fell in love with this French country-style house. First built in 1938 and situated on two acres of land, this family home boasts 4,700 square feet of room, include four bedrooms and three baths. Since Paul bought this home quite a while ago, there aren't exactly many pictures of the interior, but it's said that Paul often throws massive celebrity-filled parties whenever he's in town, thanks in large part to the home's seclusion and privacy. Of course, the craziest thing of all about this house is that it's apparently where the very place where George Harrison passed away while battling lung cancer, which would mean Paul probably has difficulty spending much time here. Thank God he's got all those other homes to choose from. Like say, for example, his stunning $15.5 million triplex penthouse that sits atop a glass-faced post-war building directly across from Central Park on New York City's storied and totally posh Fifth Avenue. This 12-unit, co-op-style, full-service building reportedly requires a minimum down payment of 50% at the time of move-in, which meant that Paul immediately shelled out close to $8 million for the place in one go. Oh, and the maintenance charges amount to around $13,000 per month. <laughs> this building was the once home for its original developer, Manny Zool, who built the structure back in 1967 and then presented McCartney's current unit as a gift to his wife. Reports suggest that Paul eventually bought the unit from Duel's children. Situated on the building's 15th and 16th floors, with an extra special bonus room on the 17th as well, a large portion of this residence contains 40-foot floor-to-ceiling windows that grace each floor. There are also glass-wrapped 
terraces that overlook Central Park on each level as well. The floor plan of the home suggests that there are at least four beds, four and a half baths, as well as a small staff room that's tucked in behind the kitchen. Meanwhile, a private elevator opens up to a tiny double closeted hallway that leads into an L-shaped foyer with white marble floors, a double height ceiling, mirrored walls, and a brass and glass railed floating marble staircase. There's even a 33 foot long library with built in bookcases and display shelves alongside a marble bar and an ensuite bath that boasts gold nugget like fixtures and more floor to ceiling glass windows. Then, over in the rear of the apartment is a marble floor dining room that connects to a compact east facing kitchen that probably could use something of a refresh. Up on those extra floors are the bedrooms, including two guest rooms with private bathrooms, and the third floor room is an even larger guest suite that has its own corkscrew staircase. Finally, the master suite features a private sitting room, a large bed, a walk-in closet with a marble floor, and a mirror-walled bathroom that looks like it was ripped directly from the set of Mad Men. Somewhat surprisingly, Paul didn't live in this epic home for too long. Only about five years after buying the penthouse, Paul would put it back on the market, asking for $12 million, but eventually having to settle for only $10 million from an unidentified buyer. In other words, Paul took close to a $5 million loss on this place, which is pretty shocking considering how nice it is. Out of his many homes, perhaps no other means quite as much to Paul as his ranch located in Tucson, Arizona. Now I know what you're thinking, what does British superstar Paul McCartney have to do with Tucson, Arizona? Well let me tell you. Paul's connection with Tucson was through his wife, Linda McCartney. Linda was a former student at the University of Arizona where she began her prolific career as a talented photographer. Thanks to her time there, Linda was obsessed with desert beauty and a tranquil lifestyle. Paul met Linda in London in 1967 while Linda was on an assignment, shooting portraits of rock stars. After two years of dating, these two would get married in 1969 in a civil ceremony at a London town hall. Over the course of their 29 years of marriage, Paul and Linda would continually push one another out of their comfort zones and help initiate the most creative period of their lives. In fact, throughout all 29 years of marriage, the legend goes that these two were only apart for one night. So where did they spend many of those nights? In a gorgeous 150 acre ranch that they purchased near the foothills of Rincon Mountains in 1979. From that point forward, their family began to grow and they would spend the majority of both the spring and fall from this very location, a home where they could be both one with nature and free from prying eyes. During their time here, the family would often venture out into the nearby restaurants and shops, such as Skaggs Drug Store at Speedway or the AJ Bayless Grocery Store. Then, sadly, in 1995, Linda was diagnosed with breast cancer. The family would spend Linda's last few years in the privacy of their ranch, where just days before her passing, she and Paul rode her much-loved horses, Spot and Blanket, over the entire course of the property. In the early morning of April 17, 1998, Linda McCartney passed away in the comfort of her own bed at the Tucson Ranch, surrounded by Paul and their kids. Her body was then cremated in Tucson and some of her ashes were spread around the property. The rest, Paul took with him back to England. Paul still owns this Tucson ranch and pays taxes on it regularly, though admittedly he doesn't spend much time there now, but I think we can probably all understand why. When Paul really wants to settle down in the comfort of his home country, he tends to spend most of his time at a sprawling 160-acre estate known as Blossom Wood Farm. Located in the quiet rural village of Pease Marsh near the East Sussex border with Kent, Paul moved into this farmhouse back in 1973, and he's continued to call this place home for the last 50 years. Pease Marsh is a tiny village that's often overshadowed by its much larger neighbor Rye, a town that attracts thousands of tourists each year. It's the kind of village where life moves at a much slower pace, and that's probably why Paul likes to retreat here whenever he's looking to get away from that massive spotlight that's followed him around almost his entire life. The village is also unique in that it's reputed to be over a thousand years old, and it houses a local church dedicated to, of all people, St. Paul. A little further down the road from that church is Paul's recording studio, where Paul has produced some of his most infamous songs. And while we don't know too much about the inside of his family home, we do know that when he's here, Paul likes to spend his free time growing all kinds of different crops. 
He not only grows common crops like wheat, rye, and peas, but Paul's also recently branched into something a little radical. When speaking with the River Cafe Table 4 podcast, he let it slip that he's now growing hemp. But what might be the most interesting fact of all about Paul's home in Sussex is that after the passing of George Harrison, Paul planted a tree in his front yard that George had given him just prior to his death. Today, that tree towers over Paul and every morning, he takes the opportunity to speak with George while standing in front of it because he believes that his ex-bandmate's spirit inhabits that very tree. Well, that brings us to an end of our Paul McCartney house tour. Out of the handful of homes we looked at, did you have a fave? I love the ranch best, I think but all of them are so unique and have their own feel. What do you guys think? Be sure to let me know down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye!